It's all very well for a man to laugh at the stuffed cuff, the draped shape, and the repleat. But when he begins to look like he dressed himself out of the war relief clothing barrel at the firehouse, <laughs> it's time something was said about it, according to Mrs. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. What's the matter with the way I dress, Molly? Well, frankly, Pet, it's that tired old suit. Who made it, George Pullman? What do you mean, George Pullman? Looks like it had been slept in. Oh. <laughs> that blue serge monstrosity has more bags in it than the Grand Central check. Oh. The seat and elbows glitter like an acre of broken bottles. When the fabric is so thin, it takes you ten minutes to sit down. Oh, it does. And it fits like it had been made for a jockey and let out for Paul Whiteman. <laughs> oh, it isn't so bad, Mommy. <laughs> a blue serge suit always lasts a long time because they pick up so much lint. <laughs> I've had as much wear out of the lint as I have out of the suit. <laughs> Well, now, you simply got to buy a new one, McGee. Oh, Molly, you know how I And that's this why thing. I called this tailor. He said he'd be over with some samples. I still say that this... Who? Who said who'd be over with what samples? The tailor. He just opened a new shop next to the bomb town, and you need a new suit right oh, now. Oh, for the love I'm of I'm simply mind. tired of walking around with a man whose suit looks like the back wall of a headlight. Oh. And this Mr. Gusset. Who? Mr. Gusset, the tailor. He said... Oh. oh I'll bet that's him right now. Come in. Is this the residence of the McGee? Oh, hello there, Miss McGee. Good day, Mr. Gusset. McGee, this is Mr. Gusset. <laughs> this is the husband I was telling you about, Mr. Gusset. <laughs> now, look here, you two. I don't know what you've cooked up between you, but if you think I'm going to be jockeyed into buying a new suit that I don't want and don't need, by George, I... Amazing. That's what it is. Amazing. What's amazing, Mr. Gusset? The resemblance, Mrs. McGee. He has shoulders exactly like Herbert Marshall. Oh, it's going to be a distinct pleasure to fit him. Flattery will get you no place, bud. <laughs> this whole thing is a frame-up, and I won't be... Herbert Marshall is taller than I am, ain't he? <laughs> yes, slightly, Mr. McGee, but actual height is not important. It's the bill that counts. You know, the athletic type, the military posture, broad shoulders tapering down to slim hips. Who are we talking about now? <laughs> At a guess, Mr. McGee, I'd say you'd been, well, a colonel, military intelligence. Uh, that, that's kind of hush-hush, bud. <laughs> ah, but let's see your samples, Gusset, old man. What have you got? I'll tell you what. Suppose I look over your entire wardrobe, Mr. McGee, and then I can tell you better what you need. That's a good idea, bud. Take a good look at it. Is it upstairs? Uh, no, no, it's right here. He's wearing it. What? He never worried much about his clothes, Mr. Gusset. Just as long as he can keep warm in the winter and not get arrested in the summer, he's content. <laughs> well, then, I would suggest a good tweed suit, Mrs. McGee. He could wear the jacket with odd trousers for informal occasions. Good idea, Gus. Have I got some odd trousers, Molly? Odd is hardly the word, dear. <laughs> Terrifying, it'd be more accurate. <laughs> Why, those green flannels you wear to take out the ashes. Are... How about this sample right here, Mr. McGee? This is a genuine English tweed. Hmm. I'd make it up in a single breasted patch pocketed style. Splendid utility garment. We'll take that. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can make my own selections. I ain't going to be railroaded into something that I. I understand that it's Mr. Herbert Marshall's favorite material. But uh, he's taller, you said. He also said the height wasn't important, Molly. It's the build that counts. You heard him say that. I'll take this one, bud. Uh, you don't think Herbert Marshall will mind? I won't mention it to him, Mr. McGee. Besides, I'm sure you and he never attend the same... <clears throat> but now for the measurement. Let's see, where is my tape measure anyway? Oh, Oh, yes, here we are. Now, let's see. Chest, 35. Take a deep breath, please, Mr. McGee. <gasps> Chest expanded. Hmm. 35. <laughs> Very interesting. Waist, 41. Take another deep breath, please, Mr. McGee. <gasps> Waist expanded, 46. <laughs> 
deep breather, aren't you, Mr. McGee? Yeah, yeah. I got low lungs. <laughs> That's why I don't catch cold when I leave my shirt collar open at the front. <laughs> now then, let's see. Shoulders. Yep. Arms. Trousers length. Well, that does it. Good. Now then, would you like to make a deposit on this suit, Mr. McGee? You want an honest answer? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, how much will it be, Mr. Gusset? One hundred and ten dollars, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> my usual price is one fifty, but inasmuch as you're my first customers in Whistle Business. Now, now but... just a darn minute, Bud. Did I hear you say a hundred and ten bucks? You did. Seems a little high to me. High? Why, for 110 bucks, I could buy me a set of threads that would make Adolph Monju look like a bouncer at a barn dance. 110 bucks? Why, of all the... May dirt... I make a suggestion, Mr. McGee? Certainly, Mr. Gusman. Better make one quick, bud, before I make one. As you know, I'm new here in Whistleville. Yeah, and at these prices, you ain't going to get very old, too, either. <laughs> Let the man talk, dearie. Go on, Mr. Gusset. I was about to suggest that... Should Mr. McGee, as my representative, unannounced, of course, send me, say, ten customers, well, I shall be glad to make a suit free of charge. What? If I send you ten customers for suit, you... It's a deal. Good. Shape. Right. Music. Billy Mill. Hey, Molly, you know what? Know what? I already got four customers for new suits. Maury Needham, Jeff Lewis, Mel Brorby, and Willie Conley. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you knew that many people with $110. Well, I've been putting on quite a telephone campaign. I got a sales talk worked up to get some... Get out the breadcrumbs, McGee. Here comes a pigeon. Uh, watch me sell him a suit. Come in. Oh, hello there, Dr. Gamble. Come right in. Hello, my dear. And good afternoon, knuckle noodle. <laughs> Hi, Madison Chess. What's new on the germ side of the world? Nothing startling, Beaver knows. What's cooking in your dull little life? Well, you know, I've just talked him into getting a new suit, Doctor. No. Yes, sir. And if I may make a suggestion to our kindly old family physician, <laughs> ain't it about time you shook yourself loose from that bundle of burlap you're wearing? <laughs> you look like a delegate to the Hobo's Convention. <laughs> I don't know where that suit hides during the branding season, but it sure ain't ever felt a hot iron. <laughs> oh, I don't think the doctor looks so bad, McGee. Not that any man couldn't choose a new suit now and then. Well, thanks, Molly, but who is little Jasbo Brummel to talk? He always looks like an unmade bed in a 50-cent flop house. <laughs> that blue... That blue surge of his shines like a good deed in a naughty world. <laughs> well, I'm doing something about my appearance, Ether Drum. I'm getting a new suit. Oh. But you'll go on wearing that sideshow canvas of yours for the next 18 years, I suppose. Frankly, Doctor, I imagine you're so busy these days you haven't much time to give to your appearance, huh? I've got just as much time as this little bloater, my dear. And when I get a new suit, I won't get one of his $18 walk upstairs and save $3 two pants affairs with a Daisy Air Rifle Premium. <laughs> I'll go to a decent tailor and lay it on the line for a quality product. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. ever had to shell out 110 bucks for a suit, you couldn't see the checkbook through your tears. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jughead. Are you getting a $110 suit? Yes, he is, Doctor. The tailor was just here measuring him up. Guy by the name of Gusset, next to the Bonton, Doc. Well, I'm going right down there and order two suits. Anything you can do, McGee, I can do better, quicker, oftener, and at higher prices. <laughs> See you later, Molly. Fine, Doctor. Now remember the name Gusset next to the Bonton. Yeah, and if you want extra pants, Doc, mention my name and get a good seat. Oh! <laughs> McGee, your name wouldn't be good for credit for a hot rock in Death Valley. But it'll be interesting to see the reaction. So long now.
Hot dog, that's five customers. Five more and I get a suit free. No, huh? it's six, McGee. Huh? Dr. Gamble says he's getting two suits. Oh, wonderful. Six down and four to go. Now, let me see. Who else could I talk to? Well, there's no use talking to Mr. Wilcox. Huh? He's got enough clothes now to take the heart out of Schaffner and Mark. <laughs> and he's just the guy to sell a new suit, new suit to do suit. suit. <laughs> yeah. A dude like him won't be able to resist the thing. Come in. Hello there, kid. Oh, hi, old timer. Hello, Mr. Blasingame. You look like you'd had a chill. You're shaking like a loose fender. Where have you been? Hey! She says, where have you been? down under the river, kid. In a diver's helmet. Under the river? Yep. Believe me, it's colder than a witch's broom handle down there. <laughs> what were you looking for under the river? Lose your dentures off the bridge or something? Hey! He said to you... Nope. nope. Just write a letter to my mother, kids. She lives back in Turkey Run, Indiana. And now, I wait a minute, wait a minute. That don't make sense, old timer. Diving into the river to write a letter. Why don't it, Johnny? I got one of them pens for Christmas that writes underwater. Thought I'd try it out. They could have written a much longer letter, too. They don't have to be refilled for two years. Uh, say, uh, did you do any deep sea diving while you were in the sea bees, Mr. Oldtimer? Hey! Did you do lots any... Lots of it! Lots of it, kid! <laughs> Spent so much time under the water, I got gills on my neck. Gills on your neck? Yep, gills. He was our skipper. Old Lieutenant Commander Gill. He was on my neck all the time for spending so much time under the water. Oh. What do you want to spend so much time down there for, he says. And I says, well, sir, I says, I've been playing cribbage with a mermaid and just won a couple of fins. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, he laughs spit to bust and slaps me in the brig on bread and water for insubrugal... For insubrugal... For... He says I was impudent. <laughs> hey, you want to buy a swell suit of civvies? Hey, would you like to go on work, kid? Where? Gusset, next to the bomb town. 110 bucks. Tell him I sent you. Okay. After the way these clothes fit, it'll be nice to get a miner suit on again. A miner suit? Yep. One with a little slack in the pants. <laughs> See you later, kid. <laughs> Seven, McGee. You only need three more. I got Wilcox checked off. I can talk Wilcox into one. Flattery. Flattery will do it. I'll butter him like a pre-war waffle. <laughs> <laughs> then if I can get Latrivia and Wimple, I'm all set. I got a suit you better, me. You better make it Mrs. Wimple. She huh? wears the trousers in that family. Oh. And besides, Dave. Hello, folks. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Do come in. Hi, Junior. I had a feeling you'd drop in sometime today. <laughs> Hmm. That's like having a hunch that Easter will come on a Sunday. <laughs> Did you uh, want to see me some about something, pal? Yeah. How are you fixed for suits? Gee, I'm glad you asked me that. I've uh. noticed you were looking pretty seedy lately, but I didn't want to say anything. Uh, come over sometime and pick out a couple, pal. They can easily be cut down to fit uh. you. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox. He didn't mean for himself. He didn't? Certainly not. I, I want to know if you need any. Well, that's a silly question. Yours wouldn't fit me. Oh, I... Look, Mr. Wilcox, nobody's talking about giving anybody any old clothes. McGee wants to know if you're thinking of buying any new suits. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how it is, Molly. I'm always buying new clothes, partly because I like them and partly because I think it's good business to dress well. Yeah, well, the reason I ask... You see, when I go into people's homes and offices as a representative of Johnson's Wax, I want especially to appear like I have a quality product to offer, which I have. Yes, but we were... You see, when the finest homes in America use Johnson's Wax on their floors and furniture and woodwork, windowsills and luggage and a hundred other things... Well, it just doesn't behoove me to dress like an itinerant peddler. Yeah, but what that got to do Gee, with... Gee whiz, pal, Johnson's Wax is known the world over as the answer to protective housekeeping. Yeah, but... A waxed surface is a surface protected against dampness and dust and wear. Yeah, but what... And it represents fine hospitality, too. That film of Johnson's Wax is the largest welcome mat in the world. Yes, we know, That's but... That's why I always like to look my best. You judge a home by its appearance, and you judge a man by his appearance. That's why I'm always buying you clothes. If you think you've nailed down your paycheck for this week, Waxy, may I say a word? <laughs> why, please do. Oh, look, Mr. Wilcox, there's a new tailor in town, a Mr. Gusset, next door to the bond Yeah. Place. Makes wonderful men's suits for $110, and you're a wonderful man. 
You go in there and mention my name, Junior, and you'll get treated right. How about it? Uh, just opened up, did he? Just this week. Right next to the Bonton, eh? Right next door. Gus, it's the name. You going to go see him? But I am, pal. Be there in half an hour. How many suits do you think he'll buy, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, I don't need any suits, but he'll need some Johnson's wax for that new shop oh. of his. Thanks for the tip, pal. up one, no sale, McGee. Oh, I think Wilcox will buy one. He's an actor at heart, and when he smells a bowl of flannel, it'll look like smoke to a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> and did I say that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> did you hear about him wiring Hollywood? No, about what? He wanted to try out for that new picture, The Robe. Yeah? He thought it was going to be called The Wardrobe and wanted the title role. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but they said that... Just... Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, if it isn't Mrs. Carstairs. Hello, Millicent. How do you do, my dear? Good day, Mr. McGee. Hi, Carsty. understand you had the flu. You feel better now? Yes, thank you. <laughs> my household has had quite a siege of it, you know. So? First Marie, my upstairs maid, had it, and then Mr. Carstairs, and then I. Well, it's hard to keep germs on one floor of a house, Millicent. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mr. Carstairs. Uh, who took care of you, Millicent? Uh, Dr. Gamble? Oh, yes, he's a splendid physician. He treated my husband for a horse, Charlie. You mean Charlie Horse? <laughs> no, a horse Charlie Adams gave him that had the heave. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, who was sick? Your husband, the horse, or Charlie Adams? I was of the whole thing. <laughs> Speaking of heaves, were you awfully sick with the flu, Millie? Oh, indeed I was, Mr. McGee. The first day Mr. Costas took my temperature, I knew I was ill. Oh, what did it read, Millicent? Three degrees above freezing. <laughs> Three degrees above freezing? Yes. Mr. Costas took my temperature, but he had to walk down to Kramer's drugstore to have the thermometer read. <laughs> well, I must be going. Yeah. Good day. Well, how many more suits do you have to sell before you get one free for yourself, Jerry? Well, let me look at my list. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. More tubes only one to pair of pants. <laughs> so if I can find only... Who's that man or woman? Man. Bring him in quick. Come in. Oh, good day, Mayor Latrivia. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latrivia. You're just the guy I wanted to see. If it's about our date to go bowling tonight, McGee, I can't make it. I just dropped by to tell you. Pressure of business, Mr. Mayor? Oh, you might call it that, Mrs. McGee. I am attending a Boy Scout meeting at the East Side High School tonight. Oh, trying for your merit badge and ballot box stuffing, Latrivia? <laughs> McGee? It doesn't matter a jot nor a tittle to me what you think of my political activities, but I resent any inference that the Boy Scout movement tolerates anything unethical. I consider the Scout movement one of the greatest forces for good citizenship in the world today. And on this, their 36th anniversary, I think they're entitled to the respect and goodwill of everyone as boys who will grow into our leaders of tomorrow. Oh, well, McGee was just kidding, Mr. Mayor. Sure, sure. Great bunch of kids, little trivia. You going to make a speech to them tonight? Well, I'm giving them a little demonstration of the things I learned in the Coast Guard, McGee. Such as what, Mr. Mayor? Well, for instance, uh, not tying. Not tying what? <laughs> Not tying. Well, then, uh, what's the use of going at all if you're not tying anything? <laughs> but I am tying anything. Uh, something. <laughs> what? Not! Oh, please, Mr. May. <laughs> you're addressing a lady, Latrivia. Thank you, dearie. Well, I, I said nothing that would offend a lady, me. I merely stated that I was giving a demonstration of not tying. You mean you're not giving a demonstration of tying? Yes. No! Don't be silly. Look, in the Coast Guard, I learned a great deal about tying knots. Square knots, bowlins, various hitches, sheep shanks, turks heads, monkey fists, grannies. Who? Uh, grannies. My gosh, was she in the Coast Guard, too? <laughs> 
I should think that would be a pretty hard life for an old lady. I was speaking of a granny knot. Oh, yeah, I see. Knot was your mother's maiden name. <laughs> it was not. That's what she said. It was not. I mean, it was not, not. Who's there? Uh, Arthur. Arthur who? Arthur, any more routines like this coming up? If so, include me out. <laughs> oh, you forgot to ask him about getting fitted for a new suit, did you? Mm -hmm. The only fit he was ready for was to be tied. <laughs> Oh, I can get another couple of customers someplace. Hand me that phone. I'll resume my campaign. Here. <clears throat> Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Whistle Vista 765. For the love of Mike, is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Is he? What's that, Mert? He did? Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Mert. Cut his tail right off, huh? Oh, how awful. Her dog, McGee? No, no, her uncle. He was telling her a story over the phone and got disconnected. Oh. Huh? What's that, Mert? Okay, connect me. Hello, is this Eddie? This is Fibber McGee, Eddie. Look, I got a great idea if you need a new suit, Eddie. There's a new tailor in the Okay, Bert. You just go in and tell Gus that I sent you. Don't mention it, Bert. Goodbye. Oh, boy, am I tired. Does my arm ache? I must have made 40 calls. But I done it, Molly. I done it. I got 10 guys to buy new suits. Well, that's fine, dearie. Yeah. But why are you sitting around in your bathrobe? Well, I sent my old suit to the relief collection. Oh. It was looking so shabby, I hated even to talk to people over the phone in it. <laughs> I got nothing to do for a couple of days anyway, and by that time I'll have my new suit. Oh, will he deliver it? Well, my gosh, he better after me spending, sending him all that business, spending all that time. I'll call him up and see. I'll do it, McGee. You've been on the phone all afternoon. You just sit down and relax. Yeah, I am tired. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, operator. Wistful Vista 1247, please. Yeah, that's a number. Hello, Mr. Gusset. Mrs. McGee speaking. Oh, he's there. Uh, Mr. McGee wants to know how soon his suit will be ready. Yeah? Yeah? Huh? What? Oh, that's all right, Mr. Gusset. He was glad to do it. Yeah. He said to thank you for sending him all those customers, dear. When did he say mine would be ready? Uh, when did you say Mr. McGee's suit would be ready, Mr. Gusset? March 1st. March 1st? <laughs> yes, he said you'd send him so much business he was terribly busy. Oh, and uh, naturally, the paying customers come first. Yeah well, yeah, well, I guess that's reasonable, too. March 1st, eh? Yes, 1947. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, a whole year. Now I can finish Anthony Adverse. <laughs> Here, call for an ambulance? Oh, yeah, I did, bud. Take me down to Gusset's tailor shop, will you? Next door to the bond town. What is this, McGee? Why the ambulance? Well, all I got to wear is a bathrobe. I'd look kind of funny on the streetcar. I thought you said somebody was going to the hospital. Somebody is. A guy by the name of Gusset. I'll see you later, Molly. Good night. Good night. <laughs>